Hi friends, this is Fazan Kagdi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of Industrial Internet of Things. So our subject name is, it is very clear that is Industrial Internet of Things. Now in today's session we are going to see the contents which we are going to cover throughout this subject. So total there are six chapters which we are going to study in this semester for this subject. Okay, so first of all, let us start with understanding industrial internet of things. That is, what is IIoT? Okay, let's move. Now, the first question is what is IoT and how it differs from Industry 4.0? So, you have a basic overview of Industry 4.0. You have studied that in detail, right? The backgrounds of Industry 4.0, the history of Industry 4.0, that is Industry 1, Industry 2, Industry 3 and Industry so let us understand that internet of things as the name itself suggests that we are going to make use of internet that is network cyber system right so what it is going to do so it combines physical device via network or via internet in order to collect data for decision making process now the question comes that what is data so data is would be anything that would be in a form of text or image or a sound right which could be processed and which could be stored okay in a server as, as well as in your computer system so that is called a data so it is going to combine physical system to collect a data so we can say that iot is an information network of physical object so physical object could be a sensor machine cars buildings healthcare systems, hospitals, right. So all that allows interaction and cooperation of these objects to reach the common goal. Now what are the applications of IoT? So it includes smart transportation, healthcare system, smart homes or we can say smart buildings, right, and industrial environment. So for the later, the term industrial internet of things or just industrial internet is typically used. Now in most of the cases IIoT that is industrial internet of things is synonymously used to industry 4.0 or its German origin that is industry 4. Now the question comes at what is industry 4. Okay so you have a basic idea it is what so it is an ongoing automation of what so of a traditional manufacturing or industrial process. Now how we can do that so by making use of us modern smart technology like what like machine to machine communication and iot combined that is internet enabled so if this iot and machine to machine communication is integrated with the traditional manufacturing so what is going to be the result so it would be a improved automation right we would say improved communication then improved self-monitoring which means we can achieve a self-monitoring so all this will be utilized and can be used for making machines to analyze to visualize and to monitor its day-to-day -day operations so this is going to be helpful so in general way we can even define industry 4.0 as an intelligent networking of machines and processes for the industry with the help of information and communication technology okay so this is what industry 4.0 is okay we are going to combine internet with our traditional manufacturing system and it is an ongoing automation remember that okay now what is the main difference between iiot and industry 4.0 so we would say the difference between the terms or initiatives mainly concerns the stakeholders geographical focus and representation further iiot semantically describes the technology movement while industry 4.0 is describing the expected economic impact but considering both as a research and innovation initiatives one will not find any technology that is claimed by any one of this which means industry 4.0 and iiot uh, moves hand in hand okay walks together hand in hand now let us see the example i have taken certain examples now over here you can clearly see i have shown a 4 gis or uh, that is for iot representing iot smart building smart storage healthcare system and smart transportation let us first see the smart buildings so in this smart buildings as the name itself suggests light sensor will be provided that is going to sense the surrounding intensity of a light okay atmospheric light sunlight 
As per that, the indoor lights will be changed. So obviously during daytime, the uh, sunlight intensity is higher. So indoor light intensity should be lower. So that signal will be given by a light sensor to the indoor unit. And as per that, light uh, uh, indoor lights will be changed. Obviously in a night time, what is going to happen? Outdoor lights will be lesser. Okay, sunlight is not available. Indoor will be uh, required higher, right? So it is going to give a sensation that we need to increase the indoor light. So this is an example of a smart building. Similarly, if we take a case of a smart storage, so what uh, help we can obtain? So by making use of an internet IoT of things, it will help the uh, delivery person to keep the goods at a particular place where a uh, space is available, right? So it is going to receive the instruction with the help of an internet. So this is what a uh, smart storage indicates, right? Now in case of a healthcare system, you can see that a person's situation is critical, heart sensor, heart rate sensor is going to sense its heartbeat and give a signal to the directly to the doctor's mobile with the help of an internet. Right. Now the doctor from here is going to activate the ambulance and the ambulance is going to pick up that person. So this is what indicates the uh, application of IoT in case of a healthcare system. Similarly, in case of a smart transportation, uh, the traffic sensors are provided on road. So it is going to give the indication to the vehicles that from which route uh, you can pass, uh, you can take the vehicle where uh, traffic is lesser, right? So again, we are going to make use of a uh, internet in this case. So it is an example of a uh, smart transportation. Okay. Now let's move further. This shows the entire physical system connected with the cyber world. That is with the help of a uh, internet. Okay. So what are the various components? You can clearly see number one represents the robotic arm. Okay. Number two represents a cloud computing service. Number three represents a big data technologies, right? Number four represents an embedded system for controlling and monitoring. Embedded system is nothing but a, uh, we would say a microprocessor, inbuilt microprocessor system or a processing device. Okay, a computer system. Okay, sixth is a, uh, sorry, fifth is a wireless communication technique in which a one person is standing from any uh, location and it can directly access this system. Sixth is a smart storage, okay. And seventh one shows a flexible and intelligent logistic system. <clears throat> that is where the uh, where the we need to place the goods in a particular space available. Okay. Now starting with this uh, cloud computing. So what is cloud computing? So basically, uh, cloud computing uh, represents the server or uh, we would say a cloud or an application system where. Uh, various informations or a data of a company can be stored and can be accessed from anywhere uh, which means from any place in the world okay by making use of what internet connection okay so this is what a cloud computing service is representing okay so all the data will be stored over that server now in case of a big data technologies uh, we can say that high velocity high volume and high variety of information or a data uh, requiring a uh, innov innovative form of information processing for enhanced understanding and decision making okay so this is what represents a big data technology now now embedded systems is a system uh, in which uh, actuator or we can say actuator and a sensors are connected together okay uh, we can say a microprocessor chip is also installed so this together forms an embedded system used for controlling and monitoring purpose sixth one is a smart storage which we have seen the example of that and seventh one is a flexible and intelligent logistic system so wherever this space is available by making use of an internet it is going to give an indication to the person where to keep the goods or at a particular location so this is all the combined component forms a cyber physical system in which a physical world is connected to the cyber world okay now let us see the next that is we need to see the gtu teaching scheme so iiot industrial internet of things uh, having a teaching scheme lectures of three a uh, three lecture in a week okay the credit of this subject is three credits now examination marks so theory and semester exam marks would be offer 70 marks and personal assistant that is we would say a mid semester exam marks would be offer 30 marks there are no practicals as it is a theoretical and understanding subject so uh, practical exams is not going to be taken okay now the total marks of this subject would be 100 marks 70 marks for gtu exam and 30 marks for our mid semester exam now let us proceed and see the syllabus which we are going to study in this subject so the first Chapter name is Understanding Industrial Intent of Things. The chapter name itself is IIoT. 
Now, the total, uh, the weightage of this chapter is 15%. So now what we are going to study in this chapter is first, what is industrial internet of things and cyber manufacturing system. So IIoT, as I have already discussed, what is IIoT and now what is cyber manufacturing system? So basically cyber physical system is used for a production process. So whenever this CPS, cyber physical system use of production, so that is called a cyber manufacturing system. Okay, even it is called cyber physical production system. Now next application map for industrial cyber physical system. So application map, we are going to see the entire chart in this chapter in which uh, various uh, components we are interconnected. For example, what is smart factory, then what is smart data, smart service and smart products and how all these are interconnected that we are going to see in application. And next topic is cyber physical electronics production, which means cyber physical system is integrated with the electronic device. Okay, so how it is integrated and what are the various electronic device, how they are going to work that we are going to study in a topic cyber physical electronic production. Okay, so this comes under chapter one. Now, in case of a chapter two, that is called modeling of cyber physical system and cyber manufacturing system. The weightage of this chapter is 20%. Now, in this chapter, the first topic uh, is uh, cyber physical systems engineering for manufacturing purpose. So, what uh, we are going to see in this content is that it is going to give an overview on a current approaches to the system design. Actually, we know that more or less uh, mechanical design system is globally accepted, but there is no such standard for a system design or for a system engineering that we are going to study in this topic. Now, next topic in this chapter is model based engineering of a supervisory controller for a cyber physical system. So this is going to highlight the steps of modeling. We are going to see in this content steps of modeling, supervisory control synthesis, simulation based validation and visualization along with that real time testing okay so this uh, uh, this we are going to cover in this topic next content is formal verification of a system based cyber component so this is going to deal with the modeling of a cyber component we are going to consider we are going to see modeling of a cyber component and next topic is evaluation model for assessment of a cyber physical production system we are going to answer certain questions such as how to model the various system characteristics and abilities which are unique to a cyber physical system. The next question that could be answered will be which indicators and matrices could be utilized to access the system performance. Okay, so this we are going to cover in this topic. Now, next chapter is chapter 3 that is architectural design pattern for CMS and IIoT. Now in this chapter, the first content is CPS based manufacturing and how it is connected to industry 4.0. So in this topic, it is going to uh, provide an approach using uh, virtual representation. Basically, if we think about it, virtual representation, which means a digital representation, okay, of a physical entity. In a simple terms that whatever a physical component component is there we are going to feed and prepare a model that is a virtual representation of that real product into a computer that is we are going to feed that into a computer so that is we can say digital object memory to each physical entity next topic is integrating robot based cps modules into an existing infrastructure so this is going to integrate various technologies uh, such as machine vision rfid rfid is a radio frequency identification okay this is the most common system physical human robot interaction so all these we are going to study integration in this topic next is interoperability in a smart automation of a cyber physical system so this is going to examine the inter uh, interoperability on all the levels of automation next topic is enhancing the resiliency in production facilities to cyber physical system. So this is going to be a basic concept of how a cyber physical system uh, in a factories are connected and how they are their dedicated specialities. Okay, so that we are going to see in this uh, chapter number three. Now let's see a chapter four that is called artificial intelligence in a data analytics for manufacturing. Uh, the weightage of this chapter is 20 percent and it is going to take a total six hours. So the first question comes very obvious that what is <coughs> artificial intelligence, right? 
so artificial intelligence is a branch of a computer science now what it does so it prepares the computer programs okay uh, that would complete the task which would require a human intelligence remember preparing computer programs which could perform a human task okay well, that would require a human intelligence now the algorithm which is used in ai that is artificial intelligence can tackle machine learning deep learning problem solving perceptions even language understanding as well as a logical reasoning okay you would have observed in most of the cases that is even in industries uh, these auto uh, ai robots are used for assembly line as well as for a car manufacturing plants right similarly in healthcare system also smart robots are used Uh, for performing a critical or uh, we would say uh, su several surgeries which require high precision right similarly we can say in case of an exploration in a deep mining under under sea again a human cannot enter into a deep sea for exploration purpose where there can be used a robots having artificial intelligence right similarly we can say this artificial intelligence robots can be used for transportation purpose for transporting a human from one place to another so the, all this comes under category of an artificial intelligence so that we are going to study in this topic next chapter is chapter number 5 representing an ev evaluation or we would say evolution of a workforce and a human machine interaction <clears throat> so basically uh, how the workers or the operators are connected with a cyber physical system that we are going to discuss in this chapter where is a human machine interface hmi is basically refers to a dashboard or a system which is used to monitor or observe the processes as well as to translate uh, the complex data into a useful information to the systems okay now next is chapter number 6 that is application of industrial internet of things <coughs> the weightage of this chapter is 15% now what we are going to see smart metering he uh, electronic health body area network city automations real life examples of iot in manufacturing sector so all these we are going to cover in this chapter number 6 so total there are six chapters okay now let us see the recommended book so the topics all these topics are covered from this book and this is published by a springer that is a journal so basically these all chapters are the papers which are published by different authors and it is combined in a one book okay the cost of this book is very high that is around 10000 rupees so you cannot purchase this book i will going to provide you the uh, soft copy of this book and refer that and accordingly also refer my PPTs and video lectures. You uh, you will get a great help. Okay, now the author of this book is Sabina Jaski Christian Bridger. Okay, so in today's session we have just given introduction of what is IIoT and Industry 4 and what are the syllabus which we are going to cover. In next session we are going to start with our main topics of our chapter one. So till then stay tuned and thank you all.